The objectives and requirements under Asset Management in ISO 27001 can be broken down into two subheadings. The first is Responsibility for Assets and the second is Information Classification. So let's look at both of those. Under Responsibility for Assets, this is about setting out an asset list, an inventory of assets where you record, for example, all the important assets in your organization. Now what's important here for most companies to remember is this is not just your tangible assets. This isn't just your computers or your servers or the, the touchy-feely assets you have around your office. This extends into broader range assets. Things like information, for example, brand image, reputation, intangible assets. So it's very important that those are recognized and also feature on your inventory. Now in 2005, the standard was updated and new clauses were inserted in this section. And those clauses relate in, are related to assigning ownership for assets. And it's a very important concept, and I'll just explain the reason why. Because previously to 2005, what tended to happen is that all assets were grouped under the IT department, or it was simply passed over to IT and said, that belongs to the IT manager. And so, for example, if I'm putting a data sheet or a spreadsheet with important information onto an asset or onto a system or server, what I would then tend to suggest is that belongs to the IT manager. In 2005, that was revised because, quite simply, that's not accurate. If I create a database and I put a confidential information on it, even though I might put it on a computer, it still belongs to me. And I'm responsible for that asset. And that's what ISO 27001 recognized and built in clauses under this section to make sure that occurs. The second subsection here is on information classification. And again, this is, the concept behind this is easy to understand. It's classifying information. It's your folder marked top secret. It's your Jason Bourne or our Mission Impossible stamp on the front of a folder saying highly classified. Most organizations understand and most people understand what that means. However, the challenge is getting it right. And what we found when we've been auditing organizations is there's what I would call a rush, to, rush of blood to the head at the start where people are classifying everything needlessly and everything becomes secret or top secret. And that becomes a huge barrier to doing business. You simply can't function on a daily basis with that. So it's important to get this one right. Keep it simple. Keep it at a low level. Keep it practical. And make sure that when you put these controls in place, they won't prevent your own staff doing their day jobs. Otherwise, they'll simply be bypassed. What I've seen in some client organizations is that they already have an asset register drawn up for financial purposes for depreciation of assets and the default position is people assume, oh this is our asset register, this is the assets that the organization has, but um, an organization that's building an ISMS they have to bear in mind that there are other less tangible assets that are in the organization. The ISO 27001 standard defines an asset as something that's of value to the organization. So if you look around and see well, what's of value to the organization, it could be the people, it could be the knowledge they have, it could be the intellectual property of the organization, it could be the data that we have in our systems, whether it's our own data or whether it's customer data, all these things have value, so they all become part of your asset register.